Hi friends, in this lecture let us discuss radial basis function networks. These are the these are the neural networks based on the radial basis net functions. So here the structure is like this. The input layer is having m not m not dimensionality, and the hidden layer is size is capital N, and coming to output layer, the here it has shown as one, but it is it may be some other value also, but it should be less than capital N, where capital N is the training set, and that will be discussed in this video only. So this is the main block diagram. As we know, input layer is there, hidden layer, and output layer. Let us move on to the description of this complete architecture. So the input layer contains m not nodes. As we have already discussed, and it's the dimensionality of the input vector x. As there are m not nodes, so that will be the dimensionality or dimension of the input vector x. Coming to hidden layer, the hidden layer contains same number of computational neurons as the training samples, uh, namely capital N. Actually, there are some training samples, some testing samples. So, how many training samples we are giving to the network? those many computational neurons are present in the hidden layer so that's the rule in this radial basis function network and what exactly each unit contains so each unit is described by the radial basis function that means this is the function phi j of x is equal to phi j modulus of x minus xj where j is equal to 1 2 and so on capital n that means the jth input, the jth input data point xj defines the center of radial basis network. Actually, radial basis network is just like a invert inverted V type of network, and it is having some width and it is having some center. And here the xj is the center of that radial basis network, and that is for the jth input data. So for each and every for each and every input there is some center point and that will be xj. And the input vector x is the signal pattern applied to the input layer that we already know. Actually, this is input vector x means that is the signal pattern or the some input given to the neural network. And the links connected from source to hidden hidden layer are direct connections with no weights. This point is very very important. Here there is no weight at all from source node to hidden node, hidden layers. Okay, that is the description of hidden layer. So basically the hidden layer contains the function radial basis function and xj is the center of the radial basis network or radial basis function and x is you know this is the signal pattern applied to the network and the links from source node to hidden layer is there is no weight that is a direct link coming to output layer output layer contains a single output neuron in this example but in in practice in practice there may be some other neurons also but the size should be less than much less than the hidden layer so it, the size is very it should be very very much less than the hidden layer then only it will be fruitfully worked out that means it will converse with a very little iterations, very minute iterations. So this is the explanation for the architecture. Next, coming to the next, what is meant by radial basis function? It is base, basically a Gaussian function and it is defined like this, phi j of x is equal to exponential of minus 1 by sigma j square x minus xj square where j is running from 1 to n where Sigma j is the measure of the width of the jth Gaussian function with center xj. It's a measure. Actually, this will be explained in mathematics completely. So it's 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 a measure of the width of the jth Gaussian function with the center xj. If it is having the center xj, then sigma j is the measure of the width of the jth Gaussian function. So all the Gaussian functions are assigned with the same width sigma. Then where is the difference? 
if all the neurons or if all the Gaussian function applied in each neuron is having the same width, then where is the difference? So the difference lies in differentiating the center point. That means in this case, the distinguishing parameter from one hidden neuron to other neuron is xj. So here xj is keep on changing. xj is keep on changing. If it is first neuron, it is x1, and if it is second neuron, it is x2. Obviously, x2 is different from x1. Okay, that's the case with Gaussian function. Of course, this is one of the one of the radial basis functions. Okay, likewise, there are so many other functions. So we can we we have some modifications to RBF network also. So what are those modifications? In practice, what what's going to happen? The training sample is typically noisy, so some unwanted signals are also within the training set. So let, let us remove those unwanted signals. So how can we do this? So having hidden layer of same size as number of hidden layer is wasteful of computations. As we already discussed that the number of neurons in hidden layer are exactly same as the number of number of training set. So here as this training set is having some noise data or some unwanted data. So we need to make the size of the hidden layer some fraction of training samples is sufficient that will be shown in the next figure and that will be discussed later so this is the approximation function of realizing by these two networks for radial basis function network and modifications to radial basis function networks the approximation function is like this capital f of x is equal to sigma j is equal to 0 to capital n wj phi of x comma xj for j is equal to 1 2 and so on and that means there is no weight from source node to hidden layer but there is a weight from hidden layer to output layer and that weight is wj okay that's the simple explanation where capital f of j f of x you have already seen capital f of x is the output function that is the output function and how it will be calculated means just like what we have done in the previous cases of neural network simply multiplying that function with the weight that's it yes that function's output is should be multiplied with the weight that's the thing and this is the block diagram for modified radial basis function network and here we can clearly see the size of hidden layer k is less than capital so in this way we can reduce the computational energy and we can improve the quality as we will uh, we will taking out some of the noisy data so what is the difference between these two so in figure one the obviously the dimensionality is capital n of hidden layer and the where n is the size of the training set that we know in figure two the the Hidden layer size is k, which is less than capital N. And the second point, if the training sample is noiseless, the design of the hidden layer is solved simply by using x to define the center of radial basis function network. That means, if there is, if it is a noiseless, every point is important, then the hidden layer size should be equal to the training set. So that is exactly equal to the first case. So that's why, if there is no noise at all, then the First, the network is de dealt with the first case only. But on the other hand, if we need to go for second case, we need to adopt the some different procedures, and those will be discussed in the further classes. So this is the basic difference between the two radial basis function networks. That's all. The radial basis function network is a very simple one. And thank you so much for giving 300 plus subscriptions and if you like this video please like it if you like to share this video with your friends please do the same if you haven't subscribed till date to my youtube channel please try to subscribe to my youtube channel and please click on the bell button so that you will get the notifications whenever i upload the videos thank you thank you very much